Hello, hello everyone, and today I want to talk about something that's very interesting nonetheless. I want to talk about this book, and we're going to talk about this book, The Anti-Federalist. Now, I haven't really read this very well, but uh, I know a lot about the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution and the history and how it was interpreted. Um, and again, I have another book called Every Man's Constitution and how it was interpreted as well. That being said, right? Uh, by the way, I got this beautiful Arizona flag. I, I want to talk about something, right? I want to talk about this idea of a national divorce or a civil war. Uh, two different, two different things. A national divorce would be very peaceful. There would be states that would uh, separate. California would probably be one of the first states to separate from the United States, considering that it's starting to uh, have its own affairs with certain countries. The governor's actually been meeting with um, certain countries. Uh, Californians have a very different identity than a lot of other Americans, so I would think that California would be one of the first states to succeed. That being said, we're not going to talk about how the specifics of it being, but how would this uh, UDI, I would say, would it be undeclared or would it be, I mean, would it be, you know, what would it be called? Um, you know, it'd be like, uh, you know, would success never work? Probably not because the Supreme Court has said, this is what the Supreme Court has said, a more perfect union. Because you're in a more perfect union, it actually argues against success. And so technically it's not legal. The uh, Supreme Court has argued it's not legal because of the more perfect union call laws. Um, that being said, uh, do I think Americans are actually work hard enough to, because they're so wealthy, do they? Do I think that they are going to work hard enough to succeed? Probably not, to be honest with you. Um, okay, so now let's talk about a civil war. And a lot of people, a lot of people, I mean a lot, uh, are talking, all these right-wing people are talking about, oh, the Marxists are going to take over and they're going to start a civil war. And uh, you do, you see them burning down cities. However, I think that's the extent of their damage. I just don't think, even if they go into political office, they don't hold a lot of military power. You know what I mean? People in the military are taught to love this place. And a lot of these Leninist Marxists are not. Um, and that's an issue. Um for the uh, Leninist Marxists who want to, I don't know what to call them. Um, I guess Antifa would probably be the best term. These Antifa people who act like um, fascists. It's funny. They call themselves fascists. Or, I mean, they call themselves anti-fascists. But all the tactics, basically fascism in its simplest definition is conform or else. And if you don't agree with them, they do burn down things. It, it is actually kind of scary what they can do. Uh, that being said, I don't think that they will because burn down everything. I mean, they, their goal literally is to destroy all property. It is actually in their manifesto. Um, I've read their manifesto. It's not very nice. Um, that being said, their goal is to basically undermine society to destroy every piece of pro property. It's a very interesting um, way to look at the world. If they believe you destroy private property, you would destroy hierarchy, which I disagree with entirely. It's like, bro, I promise you a million dollars if you watch this YouTube video. Kind of, kind of strange, but okay. Weird ideology, but okay. You think you're going to be able to solve this hypothetical scenario in your head. That's fine, whatever. Do I think it will actually happen? Do I think a civil war will happen? No, not at all. And here's the reason why I don't think a civil war will ever happen. First off, we're too wealthy. Secondly, we're too lazy. Okay, if Americans actually were work, hardworking individuals that were plumbers, okay, I could see, I could see an argument for for a civil war. But Americans are too lazy to start a civil war. They just they just are. I couldn't I couldn't imagine a bunch of lazy Americans starting a. That doesn't make any sense in my head, right? All these people complain about oh, I hate the guy who's in office. We're, they're going to start a civil war. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? It's like, oh, don't worry, wait a few decades. I'm like, what are you talking about? This doesn't make any sense. I've, I've heard people talk about this at work, and I'm like, really? I don't think we're ever going into a civil war. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I generally believe that humanity is too lazy to do it. It's not, it's not the good traits of humanity is going to cause, uh, cause a civil war to not happen. I think it's the bad traits of humanity will cause a civil war not to happen. And that's fine. Honestly, it doesn't... Either way, I just don't want a civil war. I, I just think it would be terrible. 
Um, but it, it's very interesting to me how I have a completely different perspective from everyone else. They're like, oh, these people are very motivated. They're taught from a very young age to, you know, hate certain things. And I'm like, yeah, they are. But I don't think if they're not motivated enough to get become a plumber or th their whole life is to avoid hard work and the economics is backhanding them so hard right now. You know what I mean? If the economy is backhanding them, there's no way they're going to win. It's a, it's just, they're too lazy to even work. They're not going to win. It's just it's impossible. The economy will always go against them. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you get like some really charismatic Lenin guy or whatever. Who, who's like a cowboy kind of character. Like, Lenin was like a cowboy, so everyone kind of appealed to him. This Georgian cowboy guy goes up into Russia and, you know. Uh, anyway, it's just like, unless they get like some charismatic leader, which, by the way, none of those people are very charismatic, I don't think we'll ever have a civil war. I just, honestly, I don't think so. Because people are too lazy to do that. I, I'm too lazy. I don't want to fight people. That seems, it seems brutal and terrible, and I would never want to do that. Uh, it just seems awful. And uh, the fact that people are claiming that this will happen is kind of terrible, too. I just, you know, especially people who I agree with. Some of the people who I agree with politically are saying it. I'm like, no, people are too lazy to do that. I'm too lazy to do that. I don't want to do that. So if it ever happens, I'm leaving. I, I mean, you know, sure, I love this place or whatever. I love the United States. I, lo I love the constitutional law, but there's no constitutional law if a war breaks, you know what I mean? It's, at that point, it's martial law. Uh, but, you know, um, it's just a very interesting scenario. Very interesting scenario, and I just think, no, it's just never going to happen. I'm sorry about this rant, I, how I just repeat myself like three times. Um, again, it, it's just, these people are so flawed. They think that... Um, and again, there, you have to separate a society into two different things, lower, lower pleasures and higher pleasures. And politics is considered a higher pleasure. When a society becomes richer, it starts to delve into politics and uh, some other things, um, less religion, but more like um, more things that are less connected to the uh, individual and its community. When the, when a community disintegrates, it goes into these superficial things. Uh, philosophies and that's what I do I delve into books like my my books are very philosophical and very uh, very strings and um, you know and obviously I have a completely different mindset I'm more of a Mises kind of guy you know nobody is thinking like Mises I'm one of the few actual philosophers that follows Mises pretty much to his word uh, with a lot of the stuff he says even though I only have two of his books I listen to a lot of uh, pro Mises people online and stuff, and you know the, the motto is uh, more immigration, uh, free trade, and uh, peace, peace and prosperity across the world. Those are the three mottos of of Mises um, thinking philosophy, and they you know that's how you improve the economy. It will naturally cause the division of labor to go higher and higher. Um, you'll have less wars because the economies are intertangled together. Like, I generally believe this stuff, um, and, uh, you know, Mises, the way he writes is so, it's so different from anybody else's thought process. Everybody else is thinking in a very nationalistic way, or very pandering way, and uh, Mises just seems to be, like, going through everything, going throughout he human history, and talking about how everyone's, the th labor theory of value is wrong, the nationalistic uh, theory of value is wrong, like, he's going through all these theories of value and they're all, he's diffuting all of them and creating his own theory of value. And I find that, that that's the thing about Mises that I just, I love the fact that he just tears down your thought process as you read his stuff. He tears down who you, who you thought you were. And he just, he completely just rebuilds uh, from that thought process. You shouldn't just destroy an institution just because you don't like it. You know what I mean? Like that's the thing about John Locke. He always advocated for, uh, he always advocated for institutions to be changed, yes. And the only time you do radical change, like the, when the American revolutionaries, is when your government becomes too strong and it's, it's kind of far away and nobody cares. Like that, That's when you do super radical change. But uh, I don't know what that point would be, but I think John Locke uh, talks about it. And then the Constitution is basically John Locke basically saying you shouldn't have unlimited rights because... Rights should be well-defined, and if you have unlimited rights, people have to pay for that. And so 
That's why you should always have a way to define what a right is and what isn't a right. You can't just have unlimited rights or no rights at all. You have to have a set list so we know exactly how we would should allocate resources a little bit. Um, that being said, some people would disagree with certain rights. It's fine. Um, but it's just a very interesting thought process. That's why I like John Locke. Uh, I don't know if I necessarily agree with everything he says. Like, humans are naturally flawed. I think it's more lazy because humans naturally need to save calories to survive. And nowadays we don't need to because we have a lot of uh, calorie-inducing uh, drinks like Coca-Cola or whatever. I've noticed that most people who drink soda are bigger. I don't, I don't know if that's, that's true or not. Um, but uh, that's being, you know, that's just me being crazy or whatever. Um, yeah. You are someone, I'm someone else. A civil war will never happen. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Goodbye.